Hello everyone, I welcome you at Advanced Political YouTube channel. Advanced Political Incorporation actually a knowledge processing and information management organization that is located in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. My name is Dr. Taha Nazid. I'm working as scientific executive with Intellectual Consortium of Drug Discovery and Technology Development Incorporation. Okay, well, today I'm going to share my knowledge, experience, and my research under the title of Emergence and Handling of the Resistant Report Book. For this purpose, I collected the scientific research information from different data sources. These are open access data sources, Medline, PubMed, Scoopers, Google Scholar, then National Library of Medicine, US, MBES, Directory of Open Access Journal, Proquist, CNKI, that is China-based database company, Stanford, China, National Knowledge Infrastructure, some information collected from the research kit and cross -up. Okay, well, before moving forward, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, superbugs with the resistant organisms. Antimicrobial resistance rendered the effectiveness of the drugs for medication to cure where they treat the infection and they kill the bacteria. And uh, multidrug resistance is a germ that is resist resistant to many available antibiotics. Extensive drug resistance defined as non susceptibility to at least one agent in all antimicrobial categories. Okay, well, the last one is the pan drug resistant, that is more dangerous category, uh, that is also called as superbug, is resistant to almost all available chemotherapeutic agents. So we have to adopt some special techniques, special the treatment to handle this uh, superbug. The resistant strain are often referred as superbug. These are re resistant infection may kill, can spread to the other or impose a huge cost to the individual and society and system. More than 2 million people get antibiotic resistant infection each year in the United States. Okay, well, this is the superficial, simple illustration that to demonstrate the timeline of antibiotic invention and the development of the resistance. So the overuse of antibiotic in people or animal is leading to drug resistant infection that help cause estimated 2 million illness and 23,000 people died each year only in the United States and pose a huge problem on the public health. So we can easily understand from this figure that penicillin was introduced in 1940. That was actually discovered in 1930 by Alexander Fleming and commercially and medically that was launched uh, for a huge use in clinical setting or in hospitals in 1940. And it was also widely used uh, during the Second World War, but the soldier injured in the Germany, France, England, and the Russian states. Okay, Pensley introduced in 1940, and unluckily the resistance to pneumococcus was identified around 1965. Tetracycline was uh, discovered in uh, 1950 and uh, resistance stain Shigla that was identified in around 1965. Similarly, erythrocene, that is macrolide group drug, introduced in uh, 1955 or 53. And we identified the resistance stain Staphylococcus in about 1965 or 67. Then methicillin, the first synthetic uh, penicillin group drug, was introduced. In 1960, right after three years, we observed a resistance in the staphylococcus. Gentamicin, uh, that was a minoglycoside antibiotic drug that was introduced in about 1967, and we observed resistance against gentamicin in enterococcus in 1975 or 77, some, some, somewhere. Similarly, vancomycin was discovered in uh, 1972, and we observed two different uh, strains that were resistant against vancomycin. Enterococcus that was identified in 1985, and uh, Staphylococcus that that become resistant, and the resistant strain was isolated and identified around 2000. The pezidin that was discovered in 1987, and we observed the resistance against septazidin in uh, Enterococcus enterobacteriaceae, species of the bacteria. Similarly, imipirin was introduced in 1987 or 85, and uh, we observed the resistance against imipirin in uh, 2005. Levofloxacin, quinolone drug, that is gyrase inhibitor group drug that was introduced in 1995, and we observed the resistance almost 
per year and the resistance was noticed in number of focus bacteria. Then linzolide introduced in 2000 and uh, just after two years we observed re resistance in staphylococcus cpc of the bacteria. Daptomycin introduced 2003 after about seven years we observed the resistance against daptomycin. Similarly, Ceftaroline that was introduced in 2009 and we observed the resistance around 2002 or 2011 in Staphylococcus. So this is the brief description of the discovery and the development of the resistance in different microorganisms in different bacteria. So now I would like to talk a little bit about the mechanism of development of the resistance in bacteria. There are the four main mechanisms by which the resistance may be developed in the bacteria. First one is the in inactivation of the drug by enzyme. Bacteria having capacity to produce some enzyme, they may destroy or be damaged or deactivate the drugs. If drug is deactivated, that is destroyed, it may it will not produce the pharmacological effect. So they will not able to control and kill the bacteria and treat the infection. Second mechanism by which infection in infection is not cured and uh, Resist, resistant developed in the bacteria is the alteration of the drug target or modification of the drug target. Whenever we give drug to the patient, it has certain targets that may be the cell wall, maybe the cell membrane, maybe the ribosome, maybe the nucleic acid, maybe the protein, maybe the DNA. So they have some targets on the surface or inside the bacterial uh, bacterial cell. When that targets are modified, their chemical nature changed, their chemistry is modified, so drug is unable to find and attach its target and it is become ineffective, that is say that are unable to kill the bacteria. Third mechanism by which uh, resistance develops is the inhibition of the drug uptake. Drug is unable to enter into the bacterial cell. When it is unable to enter into the bacterial cell, definitely they will not kill, they will not destroy the bacteria and uh, they will not treat the infection successfully. The fourth one or the fourth mechanism by which a resistance observed or developed in uh, bacteria is the activation of the drug efflux pump. There are the certain pump at the surface or the membrane or the cell wall of the bacteria. They efflux or excrete the toxins, chemicals from inner side, like inside the cell to the outside the cell. When drug is excreted from the from the cell, definitely it becomes in, ineffective. They will not produce a therapeutic effect. So they will not kill the bacteria. They definitely the infection may not be controlled then. Okay, well, how does the antibiotic resistance occur? There are the four steps by which resistance produced in the bacteria. First one, when we give the medication to the patients, for this, suppose there is a patient having infection, any any kind of the infection, uh, it may be the uh, produced by the staphylococcus, maybe the shikla, maybe the uh, some other bacteria involved to produce the infection. We give the medication. Most of the bacteria kill, but but very minute quantity or very limited number of the bacteria they become resistant. If they become resistant, it means the drug become useless because they are the resistant. So they have opportunity to grow, multiply, and reproduce their progeny and offspring. They having the chance, so they multiply, produce sufficient quantity in the in the body of the patient. They also have the competency to transfer the resistance or the transfer the genetic material that is able to produce a resistant in the bacteria from one bacteria to the other bacteria. So, so the competency of the resistance might be transferred from the one bacteria to the other bacteria who don't have the competency against the antibody. Now, I would like to talk a little bit about the plasmid carrying the multiple resistance. Bacteria might have the plasmid. The plasmid is actually a little circle having the uh, gen genetic material comprising the different kind of the genomes. These are the combination of the genes these genes are able to combat or compete the drug and produce a resistance against antibiotic. They might have resistance against tetracycline, maybe again against uh, trimethoprine or pancine or vancomycin. Whenever these drugs are given to the patient, bacteria produce a resistance and they destroy the drug or the drug may, be, may become in, inactive and uh, 
bacteria will survive and that will stay inside the body of the patient and infection will stay produce its complication. Now I would like to talk a little bit about uh, uh, resistant superbug, the key threats. Antimicrobial resistant that is threat threatening the effective treatment all over the world and that's a serious threat to the global healthcare system. New resist resistant mechanism emerging globally. Extensive drug resistant tuberculosis has been identified in about 92 countries. Mostly the persistence cause in common infection like the UTI, urinary tract infection, pneumonia, bloodstream infection in all regions of the world. A high percentage of hospitalized acquired infection are caused by the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus or multi drug resistance gram negative bacteria. Okay, well, untreated gonorrhea infection result in increased rate of illness and complications such as infertility, adverse pregnancy outcome, and neonatal blindness. Patients with resistant bacteria are generally at risk of worse clinical outcome and they consume more healthcare resources than patients infected with susceptible bacteria. There is another superbug that was identified in the New Delhi, India, initially with the name of NDMI or NM, NDM1, that stands for the New Delhi metallo beta lactamase 1 superbug that was initially uh, discovered or identified in, in a hospital located in New Delhi that was afterward transferred or transmitted to the Bangladesh, into the Pakistan, into the, into the Bhutan, and afterward that was uh, shifted or identified or transferred into the UK, into the Canada state and Australia. So it become a potential challenge for the healthcare professional. Okay, well, this is uh, uh, like a description about the application of the CRISPR test system for degradation, editing, repressing, or activation of the gene. There are the three mechanisms by, by which genetic material can be transferred from the one organism, from the one cell, from the living organism to the other one. First one is the transformation, then transduction and conjugation. Transformation actually is a trans transmission of the genetic segment, gen genetic material that maybe the, uh, some material came from anywhere, from other microorganisms that are uh, that was already dead, and but the genetic material that is captured by the other bacteria that is called as transformation. Transduction actually is the transformation transformation of the genetic material by the viruses called as bacteriophage. Conjugation is the transformation of the genetic material by the plasmid. So there are the three major mechanisms by which the genetic material may be transferred. And uh, we can use CRISPR-Cas technology for five major purpose. What are what these five five major purposes? We may use the CRISPR-Cas technology for the DNA degradation, for DNA repair, for base editing, for the inactivation or act activation purpose. So the CRISPR-Cas technology can be used in clinical practice for the research for the five major purpose, five five major clinical goal. And uh, DNA degradation can be connected by the case nucleus activity, and similarly, the DNA repair can also be conducted or performed by the same technology. Base editing is conducted to, through base modification. Similarly, repression and activation of a gene is conducted or performed by using the D case with mediated transcription regulation. D case means the dead, dead case mediated uh, transcription regulation. Uh, regulation because they are uh, mostly not used for the end nucleus. Okay, well, how we handle the superbug? There are the four strategies or four methods by which we can handle the superbug. The first one is the utilization of the new ant antibiotics, innovative antibiotics, the novel antibiotics. They should be highly specific against particular superbug. Second uh, technology that can be used in clinical practice is the Phagotherapy or utilization of the virus as a weapon, as the clinical weapon to kill the bacteria. Viruses can be used for the treatment of different kinds of the bacterial diseases. The, the viruses used for this, for this purpose are called as patch viruses. And uh, this technology used as phagotherapy. So, and 
The third option to handle the superbug is the nanoparticles that can potentially be used for the treatment of sewer infection produced or induced by the superbugs. The metal bonded antibiotics, nanoparticles or nanomedicines can be used for the treatment of infection caused by the superbug. The last approach that is used for the treatment of infection caused by the superbug is the new approaches. We can use the, tar use the approaches for targeting the membrane to increase the vulnerability. Okay, well, in conclusion, there are only a few drugs capable of serving the last resort for many infections. The limited drugs are assumed pivotal antibiotic for the treatment of multidrug resistance, but unfortunately, resistant bacteria pose potential threat to treat certain infection. Owing to the limited availability of novel bacteria targets, various attempts were made to obtain derivative that can overcome resistance. However, further investigation with respect to their cytotoxicity and in vitro characteristics are needed to further expand the antibiotic arsenal, not solely, but in particular against emerging multi resistant bacteria. At the last, I would like to salute it and greet to my uh, colleagues, my, my team, and uh, my supporter, like Sherry Bajgard, Wolf Gang Dance, Daniel, then Dustin Hawker, Marwa al Mugarbi, Robert Hammond, Amin, Arsalan, uh, then Ashtiak, Terry Mill. I appreciate them for their kind support and help to make this video today. I acknowledge the support and help of Advanced Multiple Incorporation and uh, Intellectual Consortium of Drug Discovery and Technology Development Incorporation. Thank you very much. Thanks for staying with me and watching the video. I hope to see you soon in my next video. Take care. Bye for now.